Hello, hey, and welcome to Rushed Vibes. I am Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by David Rushed Vibes Rushing, and we are here to vibe with you, our tribe. Let me get my mic set up. Just I didn't want to take jump, too long and then jump, you fuss at me for taking just too Just jump right into it. Don't worry about David's mic. No, he'll figure it out. But here we, here we are. We are here. Another week. Another week. More vibes. Do a little cheers. Okay. There you go. What'd you make? I don't know. I just kind of threw some stuff together mm. to get a flavor that I was looking for. Threw some spirits together. What flavor were you looking for? I don't know. Did it come out? It came out good. In Tennessee mm. and cognac and raspberry liqueur and a little bit of lemon juice. Okay. Liqueur. I think I forgot to mention tonic water. This is just carbonated water, right? It's got, it's tonic. What's the difference? It's got, ugh, I can never say the word. Quinine, quinine. Quinine? You've never had tonic water before? Like you've never had a vodka tonic, gin and tonic? There's some right there. You should try it after the show. After the show? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. But yeah, it's got an interesting taste to it. Um, it's weird because my dad used to drink it, tonic water, um, while I was growing up. Always had tonic water and club soda or some kind of flavored sparkling water. And I used to be so annoyed because... I would, you know, you'd smell the flavor of a flavored sparkling water and anticipate sweetness, and it wasn't sweet. My dad doesn't like sweet things, sweet beverages. Like, he's not, he doesn't have a sweet tooth. Mm. Um, so I always hated that stuff. He would always drink tonic water, always hated it. And for some reason now in my adulthood, or at least in this season of my adulthood, I have a really big appreciation for tonic water. Like, I love mixing anything with tonic and tonic has evolved a lot over the course of 10, 10 years. So you have a variety of flavors of tonic. So me being a person who enjoys gin, it's not just a regular gin and tonic. They have, you know, fruitier gin and tonics. They have um, like elderflower gin, I mean tonic. So I'm, I'm going on a beverage rampage, but um, there's an ingredient in tonic that if you drink enough of it is actually supposed to be like a natural repellent for mosquitoes. So if you drink enough, quite, I think it's quinine. I can't remember how to pronounce it. Um, it, it obviously gets into your bloodstream mm. and it seeps out of your pores and in turn repels mosquitoes. So there's that fun fact. So you've been drinking a lot of tonic water to keep the mosquitoes no, off? No, I just it's like tonic bummer. water. But I heard, I had, somebody told me that they're growing up, their dad used to drink a bottle of tonic water a day because they grew up in Florida to avoid getting bitten by mosquitoes. Well, definitely out there in Florida. For shizzle. Yeah, so that's what I'm drinking. What am I drinking again? Hennessy. Hennessy XO. XO. Compliments of Jamaica, duty free. Yes. And you having no regard for the budget. I didn't have a budget. Oh yeah, I I know. It was just vibes. That's what the that's what, that's what it was that's, actually like. The budget was rushed vibes. Like we. That's what the bank account like, keeps telling me. We buy this before our logic kicks in and tells us not to buy it. It's such a shame. I'm glad you had a good time. And it's actually really good. Yeah. I don't I don't drink a lot of cognac, so I think cognac you have to you have to drink the quality marks. Like you can't drink like the baseline marks. You need to Get the XO. Yeah, then that's that's up there. I can't remember who I was talking to. I was talking to one of my coworkers and we were talking about the older you get, the more you have to recognize that it's not worth being cheap in your your spirits. Um My friend is this. Is my coworker. My coworker is this. My coworker. Because you're going to pay for it one way or another. Like, either you invest in the quality top shelf, uh, mid to top shelf um, mark, or you eat, drink the bottom shelf and you're struggling 
to function the next day because you're not, you know, a young spring chicken. So I don't know if I agree with this logic. So you prefer to drink cheaper bottom shelf? There's like no middle ground. <laughs> there's just the high I mean, quality stuff and then there's just, it's just trash. I mean, you're not going to try Like I won't drink well vodka. I won't drink well to heat. Like that's aristocrat and Barnett's. I had a bad experience with both of those in college, but um, I wouldn't drink those. Like I, I have a, a minimum that I have to drink in terms of like name brand mark that I'm willing to start at, which is usually mid range. And then I'll go up from there. Like I have my mid for each um, varietal spirit, like my mid for gin, my mid for vodka. Um, but I think it's important. Like, you know, you're growing up, you know, 21 fresh, early, to, re ready to drink. And you're doing, you're usually doing cheap stuff because that's what you can afford or you're trying to go hard and blah, blah, blah. And it's cute when you're 21, 25, but when you're like 30, you got to work the next day or take care of people the next day, you know, it's better to drink, invest in yourself and drink a better quality spirit. Invest in yourself. That sounds like a slogan. It does. I might have to, uh, wouldn't imagine it'd be a slogan for liquor, but it, it's a, it's a self investment. Like I'm worth a quality spirit. You're worth so much more than a quality spirit. I know. Interesting. Um, but I can. You know, you know. You know what I I drink when I was in college. Nothing. Bud Light. <laughs> yeah. Me and me and Dylan. <laughs> you know the the trans. Uh, uh, spokesperson for for Bud Light. I was like, I don't. You've never mentioned anyone named Dylan in college. Okay, I, mean, I don't think we were in college at the same time. Dylan's a little would seem a little younger than mm -hmm. than me. Um, what's been going on? Nothing. No. Anything on your mind tonight? What do you want to talk about? I really have nothing. I, I, I forgot. Mm. Forgot about. Our podcast. I forgot what day it was to prepare myself. Actually, I meant to watch the MTV Video Music Awards yesterday. And then I meant, to, because I missed it yesterday, I wanted to watch it today. But I couldn't find, I couldn't get into Hulu. Because um, it's always logged out for some reason. And I don't know the password. And then I just didn't know what streaming platform. I think the streaming platform that I later found out had it we don't have on the other tv it's on this tv and the kids were watching matilda and i just didn't feel like battling them for the tv so we're streaming paramount i think it's on paramount no we don't have paramount at all oh well then i wouldn't have been able to watch it anyway i gotta get the login from my dad oh okay i gotta steal it. i gotta bum his but yeah I he doesn't know it yet oh <sighs> see if it's on demand for youtube tv and it didn't populate so i was like whatever but just to see what if anything significant happened, that would be worth talking about, but didn't get around to it. So there's that. Okay. So there's nothing. You got nothing else. Yeah. I mean, I know old girl with the brick. <laughs> you know her personally? <laughs> no. Uh, her story, her story has evolved. I don't know if that's still like on the nines, like if people are still talking about it, but. Yeah, so I, I uh, want to be careful discussing it. Me personally, uh, I don't want to be perceived as just another case of uh, one a man not believing a woman, uh, and then a black man not believing a uh, a black woman, um, claiming she's been assaulted, but. Yeah, some stuff popped up on the internet that said, you know, her, some people were like doctors or something. Somebody said her, the swelling, like the extra face that was growing on the side of her head was more consistent with an allergic reaction than being hit with the brick. And then apparently there's been GoFundMe's in the past where she's, you know, been the victim of something and didn't file a police report mm -hmm. interestingly enough but you know i don't know that that's all that uncommon i don't know when it comes to women and men assaulting them and 
I don't know. I know it can be a very delicate situation emotionally and, and, and mentally and whatnot. So yeah, I, I tapped out of it, but it was interesting to see the story just kind of take a left turn and everybody or more people started to express doubt. But apparently her GoFundMe got like over 40,000. Well, I won't talk about her GoFundMe because I didn't know until a couple of days ago that she even had a GoFundMe. I will address the fact that I am confusion um, when it comes to this entire matter. And I remember I felt bad and I didn't say it last week because I, I, I felt bad about saying it. But I remember when I saw the video and read the caption, she says someone hit me in the face with a brick. Okay. And for some reason, Harriet Tubman popped in my head. And I was thinking, you know, Harriet Tubman got a brick thrown at her. And because of that, she would lose consciousness. Like she'd be, you know, it wasn't, I thought it wasn't, it wasn't a brick. It was, um, it was something like way heavier. It's like iron or something like that. Wasn't it? I was always told it was a brick. It was a brick? Oh, okay. I could be incorrect, but I associated when I heard her story to the brick, the brick that I thought hit Harriet Tubman. And I remembered, you know, Harriet Tubman would lose consciousness, like even like a mistaking taking people on the underground railroad uh, and all of that as a side effect. So I do, I do recall when the video of her being in, cause I never saw the video of her before she got to the hospital. I've heard that there is a video, I haven't seen that video, but I did see the video of her in the hospital and then the one after. And I remember thinking, like she has no lacerations i've never been hit by a brick i've never seen someone hit by a brick immediately what it looks like but i i think in my mind my gut reaction was initially like she has no bruises no no cuts nothing um but then i guess i figured whoever hit her hit her with like just the flat side of the brick and it was just like like hit and as opposed to like hit and slide which the friction of the brick would cause cuts um but no blisters nothing but again who would assume that someone would lie about being hit in the face with a brick um and her face was swollen now i don't know what type of swelling go ties in hand with being hit in the face with a brick and i don't know that i felt it was necessary to do that much thought into it but what really hurt my feelings was when i realized that oh boy like people were corroborating her story so now i'm like we're all are all of these people getting a cut of the gofundme like i just don't understand the depths of the lie and now i just have trust issues with the internet and i just i don't i'm not going to believe anything anymore i think that's a fair thing to do or at least just not react immediately. Because mm -hmm. apparently some lady was calling like different precincts to try and find a police report regarding this story and was unable to. And There's no like, record of a police no, report? Not at all. The owner of the, I guess, a nearby building where all of this took place, she was like, was like there's no video in my surveillance that shows anyone being hit with a brick. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. <clears throat> um, and I don't know. I don't know where it's it left off because, I, like I said, I kind of checked out once. Um, a lot of the the it's a hoax stuff started to to float around. Um, and kind of just like Carly Russell, just kind of lost lost interest. I tell you though, if assuming it is real, the hoax is real. Like, how do you, like, did she, like, knowingly eat something that she knew she's allergic she to? She must have. And then act like she, like. Or it was just super opportunistic and was like, oh, I'm having an allergic reaction to this sushi. Let me make a, which, if that was the case, you know, that's, that's quick marketing. So an agent might want to pick her up. Yeah. Um, Tell you, uh, a lot of the. Well, I don't want to give people too much credit, but a lot of the planning 
and development that's gone into some of these hoaxes. This one, assuming it is a hoax, Carly Russell. Um, there's like a new... <laughs> And we're kind of out of the pandemic now, but I remember there was a period where people were like scamming left and right, you know, people starting businesses and just, I don't know, man. I, the internet is a beautiful thing, but uh, it's given people too much, uh, a lot of opportunity to get away with things they otherwise wouldn't. But yeah, Brick Chronicles. Interesting. I, I didn't think that it would make that turn, but it did. <clears throat> Um, speaking of turns and crazy stuff, did you know that it's been confirmed? Did you know that we're not alone? You didn't see this. You didn't hear about it. What are you talking about? The aliens. Can you hear about the aliens that were brought in front of the Mexican Congress? Yes. You really have the loop. I, I guess I am. They brought out two, um, I guess, corpses, you would call them, of are aliens. Pictures? Nah, the, are there pictures? Yeah. Yeah. Google Mexican... Um, <laughs> I was about to say Mexican aliens. Google aliens, Mexican Congress. They've got little bodies, three fingers, but they got the long, big heads. They look like the little alien off of uh, Men in Black. You know, the one that was in the dudes that was posted up in the dudes head. You just watch Men in Black? I did, but I didn't really pay attention. I'll put the comparison up on the screen. But yeah, aliens. Uh, they did some radioactive carbon dating, I think, and they aged them at like a thousand years ago. A thousand years old. When did this news drop? Because I feel like it was today, today or yesterday. I have not, I've, I've not heard this. Who yeah, found them? Yeah, Taylor, you gotta, gotta tailor your feed a little bit better. I don't have time to be in my feed. So I think everything's on the table now. Everything they probably built them pyramids. That one's probably true. They probably built the pyramids. You know that's the thing, right? That's what that's a conspiracy theory. No, I didn't. That aliens built them. The ones in Egypt or the ones in All of them. Why? Just because. Why would we give it to aliens when humans clearly use them? Clearly what? Humans use the the pyramids. Yeah, they used them, but how do we know that, but aliens could have built them? Oh, so they're saying the aliens built them left and then the humans took them over as yeah. opposed to the humans built them? Right. Oh. Seems a bit far-fetched. Doesn't? I don't know. This one's a little too perfect. These tiny people with three fingers built pyramids? Okay, um, we're, though, I'm not saying those are the only alien types that that could be out there. there could be, if, if there's one type, there could be other types. Okay. It's like we have different types of mammals, like humans there's lions and like there's there could be different classes of i mean i just think everything's on the table now there's some people who are trying to say that it's fake it's a hoax but they there this was like a three-hour hearing by the way it wasn't they didn't just like you know drop them pack them up and leave apparently i haven't made all the way through it you know my spanish is a little but um somebody had had said that they tried to debunk these as like fake, but they debunked the debunker and that they're real. One of them actually you debunk the debunker. One of the debunking the debunker. That means you're debunking the debunker, the debunker is the person that that is saying to prove it's fake. Correct. But when you so that person proved it was fake, and then somebody else debunked no, the proof. The person claimed it was fake. A debunker is 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 has a claim that it's fake. And when you debunk the debunker, you're saying that what they're saying is fake because it's real. See, the real or fake, right? So I think that's misuse of debunking, but no, okay. No, it's not. It absolutely isn't. But anyways, um, what was I saying? 
One of them uh, carried eggs, had eggs, was pregnant. They could tell with like all the, the tests and scans and x-rays and stuff they did. I'm, I'm, I can't believe that you have not. This, feel, this seems like it's right up your alley because it deals with history because they're like a thousand years old. I have not. The, the, they like they, they like they're walking around or flying around or whatever they do, however they move like over a thousand years ago, which means at some point like they were like amongst the world they were in the world on the earth just doing stuff mm. aliens mm-hmm. little, little little bitty aliens okay probably building temples okay. and pyramids but we only got two bodies yes two that we know of i don't forget about the ufo um, hearings that we had here in the U.S. a few weeks ago. There's a lot of cl- top top secret classified stuff the government has that they're not sharing with us. So that we, and most people are talking about ships and UFOs. Someone's flying the UFO, right? You find a crashed UFO, chances are you're gonna find a crashed alien corpse, right? Unless it ejected <laughs> and parachuted down somewhere as in the world. Maybe it was on the plane. <laughs> right? And AMF is not real. I'm just saying. Everything has to be on the table at this point. Okay. I will wait to see this play out. Because I don't have any, I don't know what to add here. I'm not informed enough to. to you, are you not even just moderately excited at the prospect that aliens have been confirmed to be real? No, because I don't care about aliens. Why not? I've just never had an interest in them. Why? Why do I need to? Well, one, because they're aliens. They're not us. And they may or may not have been here before us. And still be walking around amongst us. Or planning to come back at some point. Like that's just that that doesn't just the potential for that it doesn't do anything for you. No. Really? Well, what so what if you like one just rolled up on you? Would you just be like, oh, it's an alien? <laughs> and I, just, no, I mean I'm sure I would have a reaction, but in this present moment, I don't, I just I don't know how I'm supposed to care. Wow. I'm that's just so surprising to me because you're like a history person. This this is literally history. World history, not universe history. No, this is. This is world history because they found them on the earth. Allegedly. No, truthfully. We don't have evidence of them finding. Yes, we do. They just showed up to Congress with these bodies. Where are the grave markers? They covered where they found them. Look, I don't, I don't understand. This is so cool to me. I mean, it's interesting. Yeah. It's all on the table. Everything. It's that like now sense. that they know we got a couple of them. But like, like what if it's like a king and a queen? Right? If now what if they try to come now what if they try to come back for them? But yo, we need the bodies. What if they wake up? That would be crazy. But they're like, you can tell they're like corpses. They're like years and years and years old. But I'm saying if they like woke up and shook all that dust off, yo. It'd be lit. Like they could have just put them to sleep to be. Like Captain America. Or like Michael Jackson. Wait, what? Didn't they put Michael Jackson in some kind of thing so that they can bring him back in like 50 years? I don't know. That's what I heard. I hope not. I think the next generation could appreciate Michael Jackson. Oh, uh, Michael Jackson lived on fraternity, but. He shouldn't come back. Not that so Mike. Not, not that Michael. <laughs> That's the only Michael we have the option for. Not, not that Michael. Um. Yeah. Alien. What else is happening that I don't? The only thing I know about is aliens. Kim Jong Un is headed to Russia to visit Vlad. Care about that? 
Okay, so you care more. I don't want to talk about the aliens. I don't care about. I don't care about potential World War Three. I want to talk about aliens. Damn it! I'm just letting you know that's the the knowledge that I have of what's going on. And you weren't even that confident that it's actually. Well, I don't what know his you, name. I, I always make sense his name because there's Kim Jong Il and Kim Jong Un. Kim Jong Il is that really a person? Yeah, it's well, it's a father. <laughs> you don't have ill in your name, <laughs> like ill. He's he's North Korean. I know. This yeah, reminds me of Chris Tucker when he was uh, in Rush Hour. Like, y'all got any ill? One of them is the father. One is the current, and I think it's one is the son. Yeah, I think. Which uh, one's the Holy Spirit? I don't. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm just saying that's the only current affair, and the. Strike. I need you to put that drink down because you're about to fall out the chair. No, I'm not. You look like so sleepy. I'm which is why you're not which is why you're not giving these aliens the energy they deserve. It's so disrespectful. Like we didn't wait all this time. We who and we finally have we? ocular proof who? that aliens who is have we? and probably do exist. And you over here like Eric Kim Jong un is charting a plane to Russia. Like, aliens. I don't I don't care. I know my favorite alien movie. Could you guess it? Independence Day? No. Good guess. So I know why you would guess that, but no, it's not. One more. Men in Black. <laughs> that's number that's number three. <laughs> number, yeah, number three, behind Independence Day. You know what number one is. Interstellar? No. Cause I don't think there's not aliens in Interstellar, it's just about space. Exploration. I got nothing. Signs. Oh, did I ever watch Signs? I think I tried to make you. I think you watched it with me. If you Mel, made me watch Mel it, Gip I didn't pay attention. Mel Gibson, Joaquin Phoenix. Um, I feel like both of those men after that movie lost it. Mel Gibson never had it to, to have lost it. But there was this one scene in the movie where um, I think I'm not I'm pretty sure it's where we see the alien for the, the aliens for the first time, like because we know that they're they're coming. So Joaquin is watching. He's like in one of those. They made one of the rooms that are like under stairs or whatever. So he's got like the TV in there, and he's like all of in front of the TV. And so the news anchor is like, and this is the first recorded footage. And they like they go to the live. They you know they're talking over the footage, and then he's like watching the TV, and then. I think they're looking, there's like a dog barking, I think. And there's like an alleyway and there's like some shrubs or whatever. And you can't see anything. You just see shrubs and the dog is barking. <laughs> and then the camera's just like looking. And then the alien just appears and it like walks across the frame and it's like tall, long and lanky. <laughs> and Rocky Fees was like, oh, and he like jumps back because it was just the way they played it up with like the music and just the camera shaking and everything. And then uh, I think it was like in Mexico. So everybody's like speaking Spanish. Or whatever. And then there were kids in the way <laughs> like they're pointing that they saw the alien, like actually where the alien was. And he's watching TV. He's like, move. children, <laughs> like, they can hear him. like they can hear him. Um, but yeah, that was a re that was a really, really good one. You know, um, and it was in Mexico. So I'm pretty sure that's it. It wasn't. I think it was in Mexico. I think it was. I think that was M. Night Shyamalan movie. It sounds like one. Pretty sure it was M. Night Shyamalan movie. Um, but apparently, it, it, you know, it because, you know, I always tell you why I don't finish water. It's because of science. Because the little girl in the movie, she never finished any of her waters. And the aliens ended up being like that was their kryptonite or whatever. So that's how we beat the aliens. We splashed them with water, which is weird because it was like because there's water in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a plot plot hole. Hope we're gonna let that slide because I really like the movie. So, but yeah. So it'll be signs, Independence Day, Men in Black. Cool. Men in Black Two was alright. Three, I'm just like, okay, why are we doing this? They had way too much makeup on Tommy, Tommy Lee Jones. Because they were trying to make him look young. <laughs> way too much. No, they had Josh Brolin playing, playing him. I think was that or was that the second one? I can't remember. Oh, that's a good person to play him. Mm -hmm. Oh man, you talk about like just 
really good actor is Josh Brolin. That's my guy. Not to mention, you know, he was Thanos. So he's the Hall of Fame for that. But he's has some just like some really, really good roles. It's interesting how Hollywood, uh, for men, roles get like really good at like after 40. Mm-hmm. Like really, really good. Um, Ageism. Hmm? Ageism. Yeah, I guess. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's society. I think, I think like Leo's a, an exception. He has, you're saying he hasn't gotten a good role? No, I'm saying he's had all of his like roles like as, as, as soon older. like. Yeah, like, in his teens, like, he's gotten, like, really good roles as long as he's been acting. But that's just a societal misconception that like, men get better with It's age. a misconception. Yeah. Because mm. they, don't, they don't usually give a lot of female actresses no, they don't. Yeah, type they, of roles. Where they fade like, away. Oh, you're 65. You've gotten this role, and you're just doing spectacular. Um so that's that's a shame because that's still something that females have to battle, um, whether they be on the screen or whatever other industry. You just kind of it's like for a female, and I think it's probably because of child bearing ages. I feel like that's what's used to classify women for their success. Like you get to a certain age, you can't have children anymore. Like mm. your use is, is no longer like your, your value has diminished. So mm. I think that whereas men, you know, you can get it up and get it in, you can keep having kids. So I think society is programmed to think that, you know, men never expire, whereas women do. Mm. Um, and, and you definitely see that in Hollywood where, younger it's always younger younger you know after 40 i mean even even the women in their 50s look amazing 50s even in their 60s i mean 50s you got j-lo you got i was i was gonna say jennifer aniston but i'm not a fan of her right now um but 60s you've got reese huh reese reese isn't in her 50s she should still be in her 40s excuse me Um, sorry reese but you've got Angela Bassett in her 60s. I mean, she looks fantastic. Um, we were recently talking, I was talking to one of my coworkers. Uh, she, we were talking about something. We were talking about kids and, you know, got into the topic of like, oh, I have three. And she was like, oh, I have one. He's seven. Um, I'm thinking about, I want, I would like to have another, but, you know, I feel like my window's expired. And she was like, cause I'm going to be 40 next month. And I was like, 40 where? I mean, if you saw her, you wouldn't, but then the conversation evolved to like, what is, what is age supposed to look like? You know, when I was a kid, someone in their thirties, they looked like they were, you know, getting ready to die. Um, gray hair, life is beating them up. They're expired. And now, um, I look at myself at 30 and I feel like I'm still very much so young, um, very much so capable and you know still have a lot of life ahead of me so i think age has definitely evolved in a good way you've got you know more shows that are tailored with older stars um you know you've got the um sex in the city spinoff um and just like that and all those women are in their 50s and it still kind of takes some getting used to because you know you just women in their fifties being intimate and dating and finding love and all of that. And you're just kind of like, you know, I feel like we're not programmed to accept that women want those type of things as they get older. They're just supposed to become like old decrepit grandmothers who, you know, make cookies, which grandparents don't seem to do that anymore. They don't make cookies like they used to. Um, Shots fired. But, um, but yeah, so aging is very different, but I feel like Hollywood kind of lays the blueprint in terms of how we should interpret aging, especially for women. But yes, to your original point, males get their significant roles the older they get, the roles that you remember them by, the older they get. And women kind of tap out real young. And it's like that window is very small for women. Like you've got actresses, Meryl Streep, Viola Davis, um, 
Angela Bassett, who have done significant roles, but Glenn, Glenn Close, Glenn Close, um, Jamie Lee Curtis, um, Susan Sarandon. I ain't seen her in a minute. She's still around. She's around. Okay, her. We can throw her on the list. Who have been in things? It's like, oh yeah, you know their name, but nothing. Helen Mirren. Huh? Helen Mirren. Who? Helen Mirren. You know Helen. What's she been in? Red, the the older white lady with the English accent, who plays the spy all the time. Who's yeah, yeah. I know her. Um. I'm glad we worked our way through that one. These women are like established actresses. Like they are, they have clout. Um, but even and so, chops. huh? And chops. And, and range. But they even, can actually act. Even so. And also that um, that one older Asian actress, I can't remember her name. I, um, what's the movie that just recently came out? It's like Hear Me, See Me, Punch Me, whatever. Um, because Jamie Lee Curtis was in it too. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Yeah, that's what I said. No, uh, that is actually a far cry from what I you said. Here we see me punch me. Um, but that's what happens when you name a movie a sentence. Continue. Um, these women are, you know, they've been around in the industry for a long time. They've grown up. But they don't, even though they're respected among their peers, among, you know, the viewing audiences, I feel like there aren't, you just know them by name and as opposed to like, oh, in this role, they were super dynamic, blah, 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 blah. Uh, whereas, you know, you can, if someone said Robert De Niro, and you're more of a movie buff than me, but you could pick a Robert De Niro movie that you're like, this is the one someone said Denzel Washington. Someone said Morgan Freeman. Like, so I don't know. It's, it's ageism. It's sexism. It's whatever other isms. Gotta be honest. Not somewhere I thought we were going. I don't know how we got here. I, I, you took us here. I'm sorry. And it's fine. I'll pull over. That's what we do. And get in the passenger seat. Um, I mentioned, I mentioned the Hollywood thing is more of like a flyby, but you put us in a quick holding pattern, which is fine. It's good. And I, you, I like the, I don't like, but it was, uh, your point hit home with the analogy of how did you say it? Women ex sort of expiring, mm -hmm. like once you're based off your childbearing age. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, even Denzel has said in one of his interviews, one of the round actors roundtable interviews years ago, he had he was saying how he told his daughter how she really needs to learn how to act. It's like, you better have some chops. Mm -hmm. It's like, because, you know, the the man in, the, in a role, in a relationship role, the man will be 70 and the girl will be like 20 or 30. Um, he, he was like, you know, you're black, you're a woman. He's like, and you're, you're not only black, you're like, you're dark skin. So he's like, you better, you better have some talent. So, so granted, well, that was years ago, probably like, Probably like eight years ago, maybe. Uh, and, and maybe there's been a little bit more progress in Hollywood. Uh, it's, yeah, I mean, it's crazy how the roles for men get better yeah. as they get older. And, and women, while we could name some standouts that have staying power, you know, the roles really aren't like that, um, like they are for, for their male counterparts. But is it a Hollywood thing? Or is it a is it a society thing? Because Hollywood makes what people want. You sure it's not Hollywood that dictates what people want? I think Hollywood will 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 green light something and some things they'll take a risk. Like, eh, I don't know, but let's see. And then people love it and then what do they do? They make a sequel. Or they build a universe. Or they do a a prequel. Mm. Right? Um some things, yeah, I mean, they'll, they'll say, all right, we're going to put, we got Scorsese, we're going to get Leo, and we're going to get, you know, a couple of other A-list actors, and this is almost going to be a hit. Um, but if nobody, they don't remake or continue things that people don't go to see. I mean, like, the, the DC 
extended universe that Zack Snyder was at the head of and Ben Affleck was Batman. It's trying to suck. According to the people. Because nobody mm-hmm. would have seen in the movie. So they all they all lost money. Like a lot of money. So they discontinued it. <laughs> like they stopped making those movies. Uh they they've pivoted now. They've got somebody else building out that cinematic universe and you know, Ben Affleck's gone, Henry Cavill's gone. Wonder Woman's probably gone. Clooney's so, back though. Clooney's not back. Clooney okay. made Clooney made a cameo. Clooney's back. Clooney made a cameo. George Clooney made it very clear that he sold his tequila. He got a super supermodel wife. No, she's works for the United Nations. Who's got the supermodel wife? Somebody's wife is a supermodel. McConaughey. Was it Matthew? Yes, that's why I said his name. Um. Yeah, George, he good. So he literally was in a movie. It was a cameo. He's back. He's not back. He's back. No, he's not. I love George Clooney. George Clooney. I'm waiting for his shoe to drop. Mm. Like he did something. No, it's George Clooney. Everybody's done something. No, we got to protect him at all Speaking costs. Speaking of Hollywood doing something, are you current on Ashton Kutcher and? This was on the list. Was it? Yeah, it is. Okay, maybe I am a little current. And you are. And you are. I'm glad. I'm tired of carrying the show. Well, look at me. Oh, shut up. I stay carrying the show. The area with the aliens. I'd be like Jesus. We was, look, this. We was gonna see. We was gonna stay on the aliens for the whole hour. <laughs> There's no way. So I'm glad. It would have been quiet. I got nothing about aliens to talk to except for mm. illegal aliens. The aliens is about to take over. I I I can talk about immigration aliens. Yes. I'm not, we're not circling back. Aliens. No, so. <laughs> Aliens. So, oh boy. Derek. From, huh? Derek Master, Masterton or something like that. I don't, I, I don't need to know his name. He's actually, we actually probably shouldn't say his name because if from everything I've read is a horrible person. Yeah. And he gave off weird vibes. Uh, I don't know if you ever watched that 70s show. Didn't. Um, I didn't have cable. So growing up. Well, we had like windows of cable, but we didn't have cable a lot. So it was, you know, over yeah, the air. I used to bump that joint. No, we did over the air. I think my dad did at one point. I think he you can't. Did. Oh, you can't over the air cable. That's called. That's no, no, called, no, no, no. I'm yeah. saying we did over the air. So your local channel. Oh, OK. Um, <laughs> like you make it. You make enough stuff over the I air cable. Was, I think there was a point that he was we, bumming it. we did get cable because back in the day, I don't know how you could watch. He figured out he could figure out stuff, which bothers me. Yeah, you could just you could just um if because, you know, it's, it's through a. I, uh, coaxial cable so you could just split that joint yeah so he knew how to do that like so it surprises me now and i don't know if you feel this way about your dad but like my dad has become very technologically illiterate and it's really annoying because growing up i mean he built sound systems like he was able to figure out the tuning he knew how to like do dvds and record tapes so- and stuff so is he illiterate or has the technology surpassed his skill level? I don't know. I don't think it surpassed his skill level. I think he just stopped. And maybe it's because we got old enough to do stuff that it was just like, oh, they can take the reins. But there's like little, little things that I think back on, like the capabilities, the, the things I saw my dad do with, I guess, the tech of the time. And I'm like, dude, we still can't figure out Bluetooth. I mean, he can connect to Bluetooth and stuff, but there's like little things in terms of a phone. And how- out here. These are- <laughs> People just out catching strays today from you. Huh? Pew, pew. Um, but no, mm-hmm. that, that is something I've thought about like years ago. I thought about, and I even said it once. I was like, I remember like you used to legitimately install sound systems into the car or, you know, buy the, pieces to build a tower and you know the acoustics would all be like smooth you'd go to best buy you, know, you used to um you used to like burn cds and i used to torrent i used to do all those things stuff. but then and now you, don't, you don't be doing nothing i don't because i pay for all that stuff i stimulate the economy but you are very tech savvy no. and then um previous people i knew were tech savvy so <laughs> You thought you was just gonna you just gonna mention that and no. we was gonna rope out? What do you mean, previous, previous people? people you know, so previous people, what kind of people? The previous ones that I knew. So I'm very much so. You can't have too many people knowing each other that are of the same type. 
so I gotta fall back somewhere. Like if your personality, like previous people I knew had really big, you're gonna, pers- keep, yeah. you're gonna keep saying this, right? Yeah. Okay. Had really big personalities. So because previous people had big personalities, I had a, I mellowed. Down. So just big. I also just sloppy. mellowed down. So like if you had a big personality, I wouldn't have a big personality because I'm just like low metabolism. Can you just stop? Because you don't know specifically who I'm talking about. No, you don't. Um, so I like because you don't have a big personality, chunky. I'm able to. What did you say? I'm chunky, grotesque. But go ahead, continue. I'm able to have a big personality um, because two big personalities in a relationship would be overwhelming. So um, I stopped being techie because you're the techie person. But I'm very much so like, don't anyone get it twisted. I'm a very capable woman, but I'm also like old school and I married a man. So like some stuff is just man. man Oh, so you're sexist. I'm very sexist. I've made this very clear. Certain things are man work. That's not true. In my opinion, certain things are man work. Um, And I'll hold to it. A woman is capable of, don't get me wrong, a woman is capable of doing anything and everything she wants to do. But I also say that there are things that are man work. That man, that in my opinion, the man should take the lead on. So you know, call me a sexist, whatever. I don't care. Um, but so, circling but no, back, no, 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 real quick, let's let's pause here, um, because I think that this will help us in our marriage, uh, maybe help some people out there, because I'm cool with having that mindset. Because if there's certain things that is just it's just man work, mm-hmm. that's cool. Okay. Do you want my list of man? No, 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 because I think I know them. Oh, no, you don't. But. Because you don't do all of them. But, no, because I don't do it doesn't mean I don't know it. It's two different things. But that just means that there's also woman stuff. No, that's yes. not. No. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely how it works. Mm-hmm. So if that's the way, if, if, if that's the world it's we want to live in. When you do that. And absolutely. <laughs> I'm allowed to I make no it. I make no qualms about it. It's like when black people when people are like, "Oh, you're black, you're racist." And people are like, "There's no real foundation to black people being racist. You can't be sexist cuz sure. you're a man." I absolutely can and I will be. So as long as it's understood that if there's a certain things that I'm just supposed to do cuz I'm the husband, I'm the man, that's cool. I mean, husbands are supposed to cook. They're supposed to cook. No, 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 They're supposed no. to mow the lawn. No. Your dad cooks. No. My dad cooks. So husbands no. cook. Those are those are outliers. Those are absolutely he, outliers. <laughs> it wasn't me. He made the. He made that. He made that. Uh, that brisket dad called basic or something, didn't he? <laughs> He's like, just brisket. It'd be hard to hard to mess up. What did he say? He said it'd be hard to mess up brisket. I was like, dang, that's your face. That's your namesake. Named after you. You don't disrespect him he like really that. Made it very clear that he it very un- a lot more than brisket to un- impress him. Unimpressed by, by my brother's brisket. Um, dang. Um, but circling back to my original point. So, so you have the uh, table. laundry dishes, cooking, cooking and man work, right? No, no, no. this is for you. Yeah, cooking, no. laundry, dishes, and folding the laundry and putting it away. But I literally do all those things. Yeah. So I, I hope you know that you will continue to do those things. And you will continue to help. No, I will not. Okay. We'll see how long this you gonna tie You're going to tie one of these glad bags and throw them in the trash receptacle, too. No. Every once in a while. That's man work. No, all right. I guess you got woman work, too. No. Equal opportunity around here, baby. No, it's not. Yeah, it's absolutely. One hundred. Hundred percent. Anywho. Yes. Absolutely. Anywho, so didn't have cable. So um, that '70s show was one of the channels that we used to get. Like CBS, wasn't it? <sighs> it was either C- no. Maybe it was CBS. I think it was CBS. It could have been CBS. Uh, but there was there's another channel. There's always like a miscellaneous channel that airs reruns of stuff. So it was like that 70s show, mm-hmm. Frasier, Seinfeld, like on a loop every single night. So, you know, you'd watch the news and you'd watch all of those. So the guy who was rightfully, in my opinion, um, sentenced for life, if I'm not mistaken, for rape. 30 years um, he was 30 life, excuse me. 
he was he was always a weird character on the show even as a kid watching the show i always felt like he was off something wasn't right about him um and i was talking to shay the other day and she was saying that there was a show with him and ashton kutcher on netflix and she said like season two he just like randomly died like he just got written out and she suspects like now that all of this is coming out that it was because like whatever with all these allegations so i remember maybe it was saturday i was out and i saw the notification on apple news and shay put me on that when apple news posts something like they're apparently they're the ones with the t like when apple news notifies your phone of something that's happening in pop culture like they it's the it's, Senior, apple news is just an aggregator i know but it's the t like she says like she'll stop what she's doing when she sees that it's apple news posting it so now because she told me that i stop what i'm doing to read read what it is oh nanny is such a horrible influence so she really and and they, we were talking about something and i was telling her about it and she was like oh i haven't heard and i was like shay how am i telling you like you're the one who keeps me in the know so um i saw that i saw that it was apple news and it was like mila kunis and um ashton kutcher like write a, a letter no uh, character letters a character letter so i even put it on oh, what's that app not heard threads um i screenshot and i put it on threads and i was like this is gonna bite them in the butt talk about prophetic because within like 10 hours they were like apologizing so if, that, I knew if that's what you want to call it yeah. Did you watch it? No, their apology. Yeah. No, I'm not giving them any. They they don't. You know, we're gonna have to. You have to watch it to see how horrible it. Was. Like they'd have been better off just releasing a statement. They didn't just put a note on from their. Apple no, they shot a video, but it was one. It was scripted. Like you can see that they were reading lines, and it, they just it just wasn't genuine. They just like did it. So I'm I like, mean, I, once they put, I mean, they're like Iggy Azalea over there putting character letters out for Tori Lanez. So, um, it's Tori Lanez. We'll see in 10 years if he's Lanez or Lanez. Um, so hey, hey, hey. <laughs> it'll be Tori, High, Tori Highway. <laughs> once, he, once he gets done with. Looks like you're done with him in there. Stop it. Um, so seven lane, seven lane interstate. So I saw that and I was just like, mm, this isn't, this isn't gonna, it's not gonna play. It's not gonna age well. And of course it didn't, it didn't even make it a full day if I'm mistaken. And then, you know, I did see the picture cause Apple news posted again. Um, and I saw the picture and it looked like mug shots, um, for them. And that's how just bland it was. I just, I just wasn't sincere in, in the least, but and my thing is, but they don't There's, really, they don't really doing it. Like they don't, they don't need fans. They don't do nothing. They Ashton, don't. Ashton's got all of his Sil his Silicon Valley investments. Like they could. He might lose them. He got shares. You can't, you can't lose shares. They can't. Okay, that's take true. your shares. Can't take that from you. But it was just like you didn't have to say anything. You could just kept your mouth shut. Um, this will likely blow over. Couldn't have said. Didn't have to say anything about in terms of like writing a character letter. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess I feel like at least someone like Ashton was probably aware because again this was Ashton's show on Netflix that this guy was in and he got removed so this is all speculation but I like well, to I mean how many people do we see cozy up with Harvey Weinstein like you got Harvey Weinstein got he pictures with everybody always me uncomfortable. He got pictures good. with everybody and it wasn't until you know he was finally brought in that everybody was like oh we gotta cancel Harvey we gotta cancel Harvey but but this guy's not, unfortunately, um, to no, say at Harvey's level. No, but what I'm saying is, is that um, people will willingly look the other way on either suspicions or direct knowledge they have because it's not a big thing. Mm -hmm. Like you can you can make yourself okay with a certain habit that somebody has or a certain character flaw that somebody has. Um, because it's not on the front page of every newspaper in the country or the world, but somebody getting convicted of rape. But that's no the less, thing. No less. They get convicted. I don't know of anyone writing Harvey Weinstein um, character letters. I feel like his own wife, like ex-wife, whatever she was, like she had like a whole social breakdown. I, th I think because it was so bad so many women i i don't think anyone in there i don't think anybody could 
assume that it wouldn't that if they wrote one that it, they their career wouldn't be over well i mean felicia rashad came for i mean she supported bill cosby after all of that i mean as she and what's she been doing she's been a couple creed movies what else she's been in creed she was in this is us that's true. She was in a couple. Of she, was like, she was like a low key regular. Yeah. So um, low key. It just from my no, from my key. opinion, I was like lowest this. of keys. But it was a key nonetheless, and that key paid. What not key? You don't um, know. You don't know that it paid. William, I mean, look, William died. Felicia Rashad lived on. In rest, this is us. Rest in peace, because he's yes. dead. Um. Oh yeah, he's double dead. Um. You say double dead? I did. I'm sorry. Um, because originally I want to see how much of that drink is left. I hope it's finished. Um, but no, I just I I don't know why actors keep putting themselves in these predicaments and then hope I hope they're not surprised they're in this predicament. But I'm just kind of like you you could have avoided this entire scenario if you just sat back and kept your mouth shut because your character like. A character letter on a rapist is just stupid for me. Um, Maybe they didn't know. Maybe. But that's the scary part, too. And maybe, maybe. Which is also why I wouldn't write a letter for someone. But normally, yeah, because the character letters come before the conviction, right? I believe so. Yeah, so. But lately they've been releasing them. I thought that that was a private thing that. It's just the judge. Yeah. These judges are shady. Everything, These judges ain't loyal. Everything These leaks. Really Trump appointed judges. Everything leaks. I would like, don't put nothing out. Like everything leaks. Everything. <laughs> I'm just saying nothing is in confidence anymore. Every, nothing stays sealed. Somebody, any, somebody always has a number that they're willing to, to leak something over. Everybody's got a number. That number is different for every person, but if it's able to be met, most people are going to be willing to leak something. Um, so yeah, maybe they didn't know. Maybe they didn't watch any other trial. Maybe they didn't know how bad it was. And this is somebody that they know. Ashton clearly knows. Maybe it's a good friend. Maybe he thought he was just doing his friend a solid. And with his name and branding, they could have some influence. But you know what they say? You thought. You thought. Did they say that? And that's exactly what they say. And that's what happened. He thought. And then you can then you compound it by giving that whack ass apology. It's not looking good. I'm gonna have to go back and watch that. You should watch it. I'll put it up on the screen. I mean you won't see it, but everybody else will everybody, see it. i mean you can you'll see it when it releases you didn't see it before we are aware of the pain that has been caused by the character letters that we wrote on behalf of danny masterson we support victims we have done this historically through our work and will continue to do so in the future a couple months ago danny's family reached out to us and they asked us to write character letters to represent the person that we knew for 25 years so that the judge could take that into full consideration relative to the sentencing. The letters were not written to question the legitimacy of the judicial system or the validity of the jury's ruling. They were intended for the judge to read um, and not to undermine the testimony of the victims or re-traumatize them in any way. We would never want to do that. And we're sorry if that has taken place. Our heart goes out to every single person who's ever been a victim of sexual assault sexual abuse or rape um what else is on your little list my little list no yeah, it's interesting you can call it little it really it does only have like a couple of things <laughs> <laughs> so uh oh my goodness um that's actually it i thought we'd spend a lot more time on the aliens we, we can we can go care about we aliens. can go back if you want um, did you hear about your boy? Mitt Romney said he's done. Said it's time for a new, younger generation to take over. Thank you. 
I also haven't looked at any of the polling to see if there's anybody that's like going to hotly contest him and maybe push him to the brink. Maybe he's just getting out. But, you know, you're starting to see. Is he, in, is he running for president? No, senator. Of Mass? He's still Massachusetts. You too. He did go back to the Ta. The Ta? Is that what they call it? Oh. Uh, yeah, he said, uh, I think this either came out today or yesterday. He was like, mm, I'm done. I support this. You know, this is probably, there are probably some really liberal people who will say I'm having revisionist history and, and I have recency bias just because of like Trump and, and all this and just like what politics in general has become. It's not all that bad. I, didn't I say that? I mean, he's, he's Mormon. He is. So that, that's a little problematic. You know, it's it very problematic. But in terms of uh, you know, principle, it being openly rejecting Trump and being a Republican and open, openly rejecting Trump, uh, having the courage to do it when so many others don't, mm-hmm. it ain't all that bad. I mean, I feel like I, I have more grounds to say this because um, I'm from a I, I'm from Massachusetts. Mitt was governor while I was in Massachusetts. Granted, I was a kid. Um, I don't remember. I wasn't inundated in politics. But I don't remember people complaining about Mitt Romney. No, somebody complained about him. I mean, somebody complained. You always going to complain about him. We went from Mitt Romney to Deval Patrick, whom I met twice. Um, Just felt like throwing that out. I wonder who's going to play you when they do his uh, movie based on his life. I was just the high school girl who asked a question at a rally. Um, you made a sign. I met him twice. I did meet him twice. He did a rally. Uh, and we went. But, yeah, I think. You know, Robert uh, Robert Kennedy was in Rock Hill this week. I thought about going down there. What? The crazy he's a, one? He's actually, you know what? He, um, I listened to his Breakfast Club interview. He went on the Breakfast Club? He was on the Breakfast Club. And Charlemagne's Breakfast Club? Charlemagne Envy's, yeah. And you know what? He had some valid points for me years ago. Not when he was in politics, but like medicinally. And I was like, hmm. That was all I'm, this is all I'm going to say. You're not saying anything. I'm just, this, this is, I'm, I, I know what people, I know what the machine says about him and what they're saying about Is he running for president? He is. Republican? He's a Democrat. Against Biden? Can we address the fact that <laughs> I was watching all these like Republican people and I was just like, so who are the Democratic nominees? <laughs> I completely forgot that we technically have a nominee because we have an incumbent. Yeah, they're not going to. That's funny. But I was re- like, and this was a serious, uh, y'all, I say this and laugh, but I had a serious, like, good two minutes where I was just like, how come I haven't seen any Democratic nominees? Like, I haven't seen any commercials. There's no debate. Like, when are you guys coming out? And then it was like, Biden. Mm. We're st- we still got Unk. Should we be? And Kamala didn't do enough for us to be like, okay. Kamala's actually done she's, she's just been real low and i think she's vice president she's, that's what she's supposed to do i feel like there's a trump effect based off of the type of president trump was honestly it could probably be from obama to trump and just like a defaulted trauma between the two of them that they've implemented on us um and now joe biden seems like he's not doing anything or enough because mm-hmm. the last president we had was out of his mind and he was always on the news, always in the news, always doing something that was newsworthy. So I think I do struggle with um, remembering we have a president, remembering like this is actually normal when it comes to leading the nation. Like you're not in the news every day. like Or shouldn't be. Yes. Well, if you think about Trump, Trump is still and and this is probably going to be some, you know, psychological paradigm that's studied in 
universities in you know couple of decades to come but it's like trump is a genuine effect where like even though he's not president he was still in the news on a regular basis indictment and the the insurrection like words that we had to hear over and over and over again because of this guy so i think it's kind of like you've dated the bad guy forever or the bad girl forever you've been in toxic relationships over and over and over again that when you get into a good relationship you're like this is so even though it's good for me and i know it's good for me it is so unfamiliar it's so uncomfortable that i don't know how to deal with it and i think that's kind of how biden is as a president where you know i'm not saying he's a good president he's a bad president i'm simply saying that we are so used to the toxicity that Mm. comes with or that came with donald trump as our president that having a president who is not always giving us a reason to talk about him has traumatized us that we're just like you're not doing enough because the last president like we were always here he was always calling us texting us dming us like we were always in constant communication with trump was texting people remember when he did the uh, the emergency test no with the cell phones he did an emergency test? What yeah, Trump says Trump sent everybody a text. You don't remember this? No, he sent me a text? Sent everybody a text. Yo, when I tell you somebody called me today, I picked up the phone, and he was like, oh, Jessica? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, are you still with and the name of the company I work for? Um, and I was like... I think he's about to ask you, are you still with David? And I'm like, hold up. And I was like, yeah. Who had the and audacity? He, he was like, I have you down as the individual who handles and i was like we all work remote thank you bye but i was like this guy really almost finessed me because he was the way he said it so smoothly like one i don't know where he got my phone number or how he figured out who i worked for what was the hustle he was trying to i think if i remember correctly it was something about um because he had said something along the lines of our i have you on record as the person who handles like the orders for your um not warehouse but like another word for office like where everybody works from because i remember like my response was we all work remote thank you bye and i hung up before he had a chance to respond but his finesse was real smooth it's like, amazing how you can open somebody up just by using their name yes name and, 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 and confidence like, like you he just had know my you. name and i'm sure if he went to linkedin he, he could easily pull up where i work um even though linkedin hasn't told me that somebody has viewed my profile so it's probably not linkedin but you know i'm sure certain things are public record but yeah he he almost got me and i was like we i would absolutely not be the person who handles the logistics for where everybody works and we all work remotely so see you later yeah. anyway. that heavy. i just don't answer the phone I usually don't, but so I, don't to, I usually don't have to worry about it. When the kids are back in school, I'm more, especially if it's a local area code, yeah. I'll pick up because even though I have the school number saved, you just never know if it's, it's if it's a teacher calling or an administrator. So I'd rather, and my voicemails are delayed. So that's true. Um, before we get out of here, do you know what since spring, spring, wow, since fall is next week? Next week, I think, right? The 20th? 23rd. Oh. Do you know what uh, this summer has been? What we could, if we were to, to give this summer a name that encapsulated all the big things that happened, do you know, what would you call it? Hot. Yes, absolutely. But that's no different than any other summer in North Carolina. What would you call it? Scorcher. Over. Heatwave. Do you know what one outlet is calling it? News outlet is calling it? The Summer of the Black Woman. This summer? Who's the news outlet? Shikari. Did she Coco. win over the race? Coco. Beyonce. Simone. Mm. Even Kamala. She was bucking at uh, your boy, the Sanctimonious. Nucking if you bucking. Mm-hmm. I never went to watch the video. No, I was looking for her husband. And then she did the fiftieth. She had the had the little fiftieth. Yeah, she, she was through the party. I think it was at the White House. Yeah, or either that or she was just there. But I, I didn't really like the fit. The fit didn't do it for me. Yeah, she looked like she was on the campaign trail. She looked like. 
never mind. Um, but yeah, black women have seen a lot of excellence this summer. And um, they did their thing. Congrats to black women everywhere. Congrats to Coco getting that first Grand Slam. It's big time. Youngest to do it, so do it, I think. Are you youngest ever or youngest since Serena, I think, to, to do okay. it? Okay, because I was like the Williams sisters. I would have thought that they did it. Congrats, girl. Just Simone came back balling. Shikari, she's not back. She's better. Beyonce tore about to probably do a Billy. A Billy, a Billy. Easy, easy Billy. Understand. Like there's nothing that easy. There's nothing about a billion dollars that should be easy. She's about to do the joint easy. Allegedly, they have not released Taylor Swift's numbers. Well, she'll probably do a Billy easy too. They'll both kill it. Do easy bills. I should you see that there's a um there was uh today I don't know if it was a newspaper or something, there was like two job postings listed for like just Taylor Swift a Taylor Swift reporter and a Beyonce like social media reporter paying twenty two to fifty dollars. A range of twenty one to fifty dollars an hour. Just to like tweet info or post information about them. Like a beat. Like a beat writer, but just for a Beyonce and Taylor Swift. You should have applied. This oh. part where you say you did. No. <laughs> like girl. Yeah. I was all over that no, thing. There's. I was talking to someone. Maybe it was you. Maybe really, really, really someone else. Would be a raise. Where? Because Beyonce came to Charlotte. I didn't go. Um. Because I don't really. I don't really subscribe to Fandemonium. Like, I, there's no one that I'm a diehard fan. Like, oh my gosh, they're here. They're in town. Like, I'm I bomb by walk through the door. You pass out. Yeah, because they'd be like, "What's this ghost doing?" <laughs> Oh, was a demon. Aliens See, brought him back. The devil's a liar. The aliens brought him back. Um, he up there with the aliens. I mean, Bob Marley would have probably, is probably the closest I've come to, like, fandom. But he's been dead my whole life. Um, Which is why if he walked through that door, you'd be like, huh. he'd wilt. I did appreciate when I saw Lauren Hill. I really do enjoy some Lauren Hill. But, um, so, sh you know, Beyonce came to Charlotte. You asked me. You were ready to buy tickets. You asked me, and I said no. Um, but there's a part of me that's like, dang, I should have seen her because I feel like this is probably the last tour she's going to do. Mm -hmm. That tells me. I mean, she's 42. That's not old by any means, but I feel like that's her ending on a high note. So my hope is I did tell myself. I think I also was kind of conflicted because you had a lot of these like evangelicals who were like this is witchcraft and blah 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 because you know you know people the christians when they when they get on something if you like something too hard then it's, it's always it's always the devil remind me i'm not gonna play it here but ray sent me a, a reel remind me to show it to you before like when we finish remind me to show it to you before we go to bed is it that pastor who was rebuking people for liking beyonce mm-hmm just remind me to show it to you. Okay. Um, Shout out to Ray. It's my guy. So, oh, my. You're Ray. What Ray did you think I was talking about? Oh, no. I, I, I don't call her Ray. Oh, God. Oh, call her Rachel. It's the one where. <laughs> I know. It, you know, did he send it to you too? Like 2050. Yeah. 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 And I, I part of me tried to fight it. You when laughed. I, la I laughed. I oh, was like, good. yo, this is a good one. Really good. All right. So now that I know you laughed, I'm probably going to play it. You gonna play it? I'm gonna play it here. Yeah. I laughed. Um. <laughs> oh, there are still people left alive. Okay, this is gonna sound really weird, but what year is this? It's 2073. The time machine worked. It's been 50 years. Are, are you alone or are there other survivors? Survivors? Yes! Our climate was on the brink of collapse. Did humanity not get driven underground? I was sent here to salvage what I can and hopefully find a clue to avoid the inevitable annihilation that our scientists warned us about. Oh, right, that. Yeah, no, everything's good. In fact, better than good. Humanity's thriving. The global average temperature is 70 degrees. Everybody on Earth has access to food, fresh water, housing, education. We've all but eradicated disease, and you have to go back three generations to find anyone who remembers war. How is that even possible? Okay, you're not going to believe me, but turns out Jesus was real. And he came back. And he created this paradise on oh, Earth? no. <laughs> no. Uh, he just took all the Christians with him. Yeah, the rapture happened and we got left behind. And without the Christians holding us back, we actually progressed as a society. <sighs> well, I'll be damned. Technically, yes. 
I did. Uh, but I don't subscribe to, I don't subscribe to being that type of Christian. Um, anyway, so I do, I do think she's going to do, I hope she does like a Vegas residency, but I feel like this is probably her last tour. You know, she's a mom, she's got three kids. Um, if she does a tour, it'll probably be after they have Blue Ivy create, do an album. Cause I feel like they're cultivating her to get into the music career. Um, but there is a part of me that like keeps looking and I'm like, maybe I should go to another city. My cousin and I were talking about going to Vancouver, but the thing about my cousin is she has no single. Kids. She's single no and kids. she's an attorney in New York. So uh, I feel like her quarterly income is it's her, no, let me talk, let me talk. her half year income is probably like our incomes combined. Don't pop a watch. So, um, Don't do that. It's not cool. So it's easy for her to be like, yeah, let's go to Vancouver in a week. Um, and see we could, if you wanted to go, I could, could have, I could have, we could do it and, and it wouldn't be an issue. I could have. And I probably, I, I might text her and just be like, okay, we still have new Orleans. I think we have Arlington, Kansas city. You can't go to new Orleans. Why? Um, uh, no, you can do any other city, not new Orleans. Why? No. That's our city. <laughs> we had to do new Orleans together. We've done new Orleans together. Yes. No. For in perpetuity. We always have to do New Orleans together. Okay, then come on. We have. What are, you, what are we gonna do with the children? Forget them kids. They can come see Beyonce too. Hey, um, now you talk on my language. So see if Alan wants to babysit. I'm not leaving my children with Alan. No, you don't have to worry about it. Alan won't be left alone with our children. Kid. He had what twenty minutes alone with Solace. And <laughs> Scarred him for life. <laughs> she, we still talk about that every once in a while. Just kept talking. I thought she was shy. Um, but yeah, I still think I, there's a part of me that's like, I just want to say that I saw her. Um, not, I'm not a fan or anything, but I have had people tell me like, you experienced a Beyonce concert and you've experienced a concert. So there's it's probably still, like, um, it's probably like one of those network MLM events. It probably is. Cause everybody there is high and, and like just, it's the adrenaline. Yeah, it's, it's the yeah. adrenaline. So and you're um, like, oh wow, all these other people are excited. I should be excited, but wait a minute, why are they actually excited? It's just so much work. Like I've never done anything in a stadium. Like I've never been to like a professional football game. You never been to a game? Mm -mm. The one time we had Panthers tickets, we didn't go to the game. We didn't go to the game. I can't remember. Somebody got me the tickets. I've gotten Panthers tickets twice. <laughs> I got them from work, and then another time, Solace of School gave us tickets, and we ended up not going. Oh uh, yeah, we'll see again. Uh, I think I'm. I think I'm over my my boycott. So a we football, go, we can go see a game. Yeah. Um. So I've never really just been to a stadium for the sake of being at a stadium. Uh. So that also overwhelms me. I'm still kind of anxious of being in like. I have a thing about being able to get out. When I'm ready to leave, girl, and when I'm ready to leave, yeah, that's when both. everyone else is ready to leave, and it's just like fifty thousand people trying to come out like tunnel, and then you got the traffic, and I always have to use the bathroom, so I'm just ain't like that's what makes me anxious: the getting in and the getting out. I get it, but um, there's a part of me that's like maybe you should go see it so you can tell your kids one day, like yeah, I saw. Charity been LA. She has. So that was the thing we were gonna because she was in LA the day we came back from jamaica so we were like we could bump our return flights and just fly from jamaica straight to l.a you should have done it i should have i was off you were off you should have just done it but i'd already paid for my return flight i probably could have paid for the difference um see we get in these conversations and i realize that you're like do it and i'm just like no i can't do this like i have to be considerate blah 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 yolo no let's go We'll see. All right, like, I don't know. There was a time where I would have been like, Ugh. the goal. What? It's like, you want to go and you want to go to LA and see Beyonce instead of coming home to me? No, I'm just like, go. Somebody got to have a good time. You could have a good time. I am having a good time. I almost went to go see Drake. I'm at I home. Looked, I'm at home with these kids. I looked at these Drake ticket pro and these are in Charlotte, the Drake tickets. And my friend Jess, she. It's amazing. It, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was saying Jess was telling me she was like, yeah, I thought it was cute when you said you were going to try and find Drake tickets because the tickets that I saw in the section she's in were $1,600. And I sent her a screenshot and said, ain't no way. It, and she said, you got to catch them quick. Yeah, it's amazing to me how people 
like Hall of Fame type artists come to your city and people think that tickets aren't going to be buku. Like it's like, and it happens every time. Like he just astounds me. Like Mark was like, <laughs> we was in the group chat talking about, I would get these Chappelle tickets tomorrow at 10 AM. And then joins us like 400 a pop starting. And he was like, forget that. I was like, bro, what you thought they was going to be like $50? Yeah, not this game Chappelle. <laughs> so, and you know, it's going to be a Netflix special. Yeah. So Drake, yeah, I say expect sixteen hundred. It's Drake. It's Drizzy. And she told me she spent more on Drake than she did on her Beyonce tickets. I'm really putting all her business out here. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's sad. But no, I have a, I have, but I have a special appreciation for Drake because I was, numbers too, like sixteen hours. Um, I'm gonna leave it in because Start like. Playing. When I started my freshman year of high school, of college, excuse me, that's kind of when Drake like started like to peak. You know, he was no more Degrassi, which I'd never watched, so I don't know him from there. So my only affiliation with Drake is people referencing the guy in the wheelchair from Degrassi and me wondering what Degrassi was, and then the fact that I just knew his music. So it was like you do you the best. Like yeah. that was like my freshman year of college theme song so i have such an appreciation for drake's that i would probably go pay to see drake locally in charlotte before going to see beyonce but i think it'd be cool to see both of them and be able to compare because i don't know that i've ever had a true concert experience so i hope that happens for you i hope it does too with the right artist that i know enough of their songs so that i don't have to like like do that I whole would, vibe dance through i would i would love that for you I, w I would love it for me too. I'm sure. I'll, I'll make it. I've learned, I think I've learned, finally learned my lesson. You sure? Yeah. Uh, to just do it instead of. Buy it. And even if it's somebody you hate, you're going anyway. You're going to take your ass and get I this concert to, experience. I go see Lauren Hill. Um, I did see her when she came to the underground. And granted, she was like two and a half hours late. Um, well, you're going to get these. You're going to get these Jason Aldean tickets. <laughs> you're going to go. Absolutely. You're going to go sing about your small town. No. You're going. I feel upset. I wonder how Ludacris feels because he was on the um, Dirt Road remix. Yeah. That used to be my jam. I used to be chilling on a dirt road. All right. That's enough. It is. Damn. I thought really that we were going to get out of here like hour under an hour and 10 minutes. And then I we talked we for like. get out of here under an hour. If we had stopped after Aliens. But I got a second win. This, you're just disappointing. I said, I'm way more excited about the aliens. You will be. I don't when one shows up at your front door, and then you're going to be my like. my front door? All the front doors in the world. Why would an alien show up? Because you, you don't believe. There are lots of other people who don't believe. They don't have a podcast. Put, put some holy oil on the door. They don't care nothing about that. They don't repel they them. They ain't worried about it. They'll repel them. They ain't worried nothing about that. They should be. They probably walk right through that door, literally. They should They'd probably just they catch the Holy Ghost fire. Yeah, all right. Let's put some sand Re down. Put some sand down at the door just in case. Return to the pit of hell where they belong. <laughs> they probably think the same thing about us. Well, look at these creatures. Planet. This is the planet. Is it? This is the planet. I and maybe we're just maybe we're just borrowing this joint. I was put here. Maybe it's time. My, maybe it's time for them to collect. I was put here. No, you were allowed to be put here. Doesn't matter. It's where my butt is. Whatever. Um, we'll be back next week, <laughs> hopefully. And uh, unless we get abducted, unless we get abducted by these y'all, if y'all haven't seen it, go check out the aliens. I saw the picture. It was actually legit. It's a legit al aliens. It's still questionable. Aliens. I'm gonna debunk the debunker. No, you can't debunk the debunk. debunked debunker. Aliens. Alien vibes, ET vibes. Um, be sure to like, subscribe. Uh, we're on Apple. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And as Jessica would always say, go to uh, go to our website. So we're not spending. Yeah, we're paying for that thing. Go hey, visit hey, it. Go check it out. I'm sure. I mean, most people who click the Facebook link I that takes you to the LinkedIn. You really? Yeah. Podcast host. Um, in the website so you can take your butt so people can take their butts to that website well, anyone who clicks on the on the facebook links it takes you to the website and, oh. and instagram as well yeah and it counts as a youtube because just it just embeds the video in the page oh okay i'll start yeah. doing that more then yeah so um it gets views not a lot but enough okay get some love 
Um, and yeah, I think that's it. We out of here, and we'll be back next week. So, y'all stay safe. <laughs> what was that? I was just waiting for you to do. Were you gonna say something? No. <laughs> it was. Because <laughs> the aliens coming back. They, oh they're, trying, they're trying to. <laughs> the aliens. Minding, Are you an alien? No. Did you have a moment where you forgot, or you were like, you you talking in your native tongue? <laughs> Should you just close out the episode? All right, that's our project this week. We out, y'all. Peace. Yeah. Hey, hey. I done came way too far, can't stop me now. I done came way too far, can't stop me now. I done came way too far, can't stop me now. I done came way too far, can't stop me now. Stop me now, stop me now. Yeah, I done came way too far, can't stop me 